Man, I really want to review the PlayStation 5, but with this worldwide chip shortage, it's been so hard to get one. Wait, that's it. I'll use Doctor Strange's ring that I got from Etsy. Okay. Find a PlayStation 5. Find a PlayStation 5. Find a PlayStation 5. Whoa. Let's tech it out. What is up guys, just Stendo here. I review tech and one of the hottest tech items of the past couple of years is the PlayStation 5. This released during the peak of the pandemic back in 2020 and ever since then it has been hard to get a hold of this console. Now that some time has passed, we'll see if this next gen console is still worth it in 2022. I will go ahead and start with the design because this will be the first thing you'll notice about this console. It towers at 15.4 inches tall and dwarfs the PlayStation 4 models before it. The digital model that I am reviewing is 3.6 inches wide versus the 4.1 inches of the base model disc version. The size is important to know as you will definitely need to plan ahead on how to fit this console on your entertainment center. While previous PlayStation models opted for a stealthy sleek matte black that blends into your living room, the PS5 makes a statement to all who see it with its size, black and white color scheme, and eccentric design. The PS5 is meant to stand out and Sony must have made this in mind when designing the console. There are small details that really stand out as nice aha moments, like how the inside of the white base as well as the outside of the new DualSense controller are made of small PlayStation symbols that make up the textured feeling of the plastic. You can make the console lie on its side or vertical like how it's promoted in marketing material. Either way, it will look like an art center or a spaceship with glowing blue LEDs. I personally think the design is cool, but it's definitely not for everyone. One thing I will like to point out about the weird design choices with this console is the fact that it can't actually stand up on its own. It comes with a black stand that you have to manually attach to the bottom with a screw in order for it to be stable. This is a design flaw in my opinion, as you can't prop up the console on its own out of the box. The newly designed and rebranded DualSense controller is much improved over the previous DualShock 4 design, which was already good in my opinion. This newer version increases the size of the controller and ditches the anemic size of the DualShock design. With the Meteor controller comes more grip, but not a ton of added weight, so long playthroughs didn't add any fatigue. The controller complements the system nicely with the same black and white color scheme and pulsating LEDs that change color, depending on the situation. Overall, this design is for those who want to stand out and people will immediately know that you have the latest PlayStation when they see this in your home. Oh, and you can also buy custom plates for the system that are different colors, like black, red, or blue, if you aren't digging the white plastic case. More important than the design, especially if you tuck the system behind your 4K TV so no one can see it, is the performance of the system. Oh, and boy does the system have performance. It features an AMD Zen 2 CPU with eight cores that was designed together by Sony and AMD. It also boasts 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 SD RAM. It also has a two double-sided fan design, which it needs to cool the components of these next-gen console specs. Where you really feel the speed difference, and the most important feature in my opinion, is the custom-built 825 gigabyte solid state drive. This drive not only runs circles around the slow hard disk drives in the PlayStation 4 family, it is equivalent to most M.2 PCIe SSDs found in the PC markets at 5,500 megabytes per second. For the average gamer, all you need to know is that the drive loads games in seconds. What would have taken the PS4 30 seconds to a minute to load a heavy AAA game now takes the PS5 just mere seconds to load. That was the next gen feature that blew my mind. The ability to boot the system and start playing a AAA game in what felt like under a minute definitely spoiled me compared to consoles of the past. Of course, this is even faster when woken up from sleep mode than straight to a suspended game similar to a Nintendo Switch or Xbox Series X, but the point still remains. The PS5 used bleeding edge SSD tech when it released and it holds up well today. When it comes to performance in general, however, there are some caveats. Sony marketed this system as having games with 4K resolution with up to 120 frames per second and one of these at a time is mostly true. See, there are two issues. One, there aren't a lot of games that can actually run at both 4K and 120 FPS and the other issue is the average gamer or family who buys a PS5 won't have a TV that has both 4K and 120Hz. 
If you do, that is great and you're ready for next gen gaming, but most people just own a 4K TV and don't even know what 120 hertz is. 120 FPS doubles the frame rate and makes games even smoother than before. I've covered the screen tech in my other reviews. Link to those in the description or link the video above. There is also the issue that Sony finally announced support recently for 1440p resolution, which is popular for gamers who play on monitors. What I noticed myself is that games on PS5 either choose the higher resolution at 60 FPS, like in Miles Morales' Fidelity mode, which allows advanced features like ray tracing or just higher 120 FPS at a lower resolution, like the optional performance mode. As long as you have your expectations on performance grounded, you won't be disappointed with the beautiful visuals that the PS5 can produce. Lastly, the performance on the new DualSense controller is pretty cool. It has these advanced haptic feedback features that are similar to Nintendo's HD rumble on the Switch, uh, except that this feature is better implemented on Sony's flagship console. Examples of this feature in action is when you shoot a bow and arrow. The triggers start to resist your press when you pull the arrow back on your bow, or when you swing in the city in Miles Morales. The touch sensitive pad in the center sticks around from last generation and the buttons are tactile and the controller overall feels good in the hands. Battery life is still a misstep with this controller as it only lasts what feels like a couple of hours, but this is remedied by charging docks and the fact that the controller supports USB-C, which is a huge relief. Okay, most of you are like, we don't care about the specs, does PS5 have great games? The answer is a resounding yes. Sony is known for their high-quality fan-favorite exclusives such as the mentioned Marvel's Spider-Man and Miles Morales, The Last of Us, God of War, Uncharted, just to name a few. The sheer power of the PS5 means that all AAA games will be supported on this system as long as they don't have exclusive rights to another console or PC. I would say that this console is perfect for those who want to hop onto next-gen console gaming and prefer Sony exclusive first-party games over what Microsoft or Nintendo have to offer. If you own a huge PS4 library, a lot of those games will be backwards compatible or upgraded to PS5 versions at a small cost. Signing in for my PS4 Sony account had no issues and the old digital games I downloaded showed up as available to download on the PlayStation 5. Also, there's a weird feature where you can stream your PS5 from your PS4 if you still have both, which I guess is cool if you're in different rooms. I will say that if you get the digital version like what I have here, it will be aesthetically appealing since there is no bulge for the disk drive, but you will run out of space fast. The previously mentioned 825 gigabyte SSD only leaves you with around 600 gigabytes after the operating system and updates take place. And considering each game is upward of 50 to 100 gigabytes each, you will only have a handful of games before needing to delete some. Solutions to this include replacing the internal SSD with a higher capacity one, but that requires the know-how of opening up your PS5 and knowing the exact SSD to purchase which will be pricey with two terabyte options starting at $300 and upwards of $800 to $900 for a four terabyte SSD. Slightly cheaper alternatives include buying a compatible external SSD that you can plug into the USBs of the PS5. Make sure that if you buy these that they are compatible with the PS5 as they need certain read and write speeds to run games and this is even more crucial if you're replacing the internal SSD of the PS5. Is the PlayStation 5 worth it in 2022? That depends on what price you buy it for and if it's worth it to you to search for one. These consoles are hard to buy and it's common for prices to skyrocket from scalpers on eBay or other online stores. Sony's having a hard time keeping up with production with demand. Scalpers charge $800 and up for a base digital model which is double the retail price of $399. If you can find a PS5 in stores at retail price, do not hesitate to buy it if you are wanting one or else you'll have to pay double elsewhere. The console will most likely have an extended life cycle due to these worldwide chip shortages, so it is definitely worth it to gamers everywhere who want it in 2022. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video and subscribe so I can continue to make videos that I hope can help people with their tech decisions. I'll catch you guys in the next video and happy gaming.